A two-state solution is not a solution for the Palestinians. It's whitewashing the crimes of the Zionists, accepting occupation, and it's just simply unworkable. Yes, I understand that many sincere people call for a free Palestine or a two-state solution. However, we must be careful not to fall into the trap of accepting the permanent subordination of the Palestinian people. Israel living alongside the new state of Palestine. It's long been seen as the answer, but remains elusive. With the war in Gaza, it's back in the headlines. The only real solution is a two-state solution over time. A lasting end to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict can only come through a two-state solution. A future in which two states live side by side in peace and security. We know that the Jews numbered around 5-8% to 8% of the Palestinian population in the early 20th century. We also know that the Zionist movement pushed for a Jewish ethno-racial supremacist state. As former Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin stated, I don't believe that for 2,000 years Jews dreamed and prayed about the return to Zion to create a bi-national state. They didn't want a state where you had Jews, Christians and Muslims and who, by the way, the Muslims being the majority, could live in peace together. They wanted to create a specific Jewish state, but they simply didn't have the population demographics for this. Even after World War II, the Jewish population was only around 30%, despite British policies largely favouring European Jewish migration to create, as what Ronald Storr said, a little loyal Jewish Ulster, meaning they wanted to create a loyal British population in the Arab region to serve British colonial interests. This 30% Jewish population after World War II only owned around 8% of the land, yet the United Nations recommended gifting the Zionists 54% of the land, while 70% were to be given only 46%. Completely unfair, right? This colonial project to create a pro-Western, pro-British, initially pro-British entity to serve colonial interests was then rubber-stamped by the neo-colonial entity known as the United Nations. Even then, Israel used the excuse of the Arab-Israeli war, a phony war conducted by Arab leaders who were more interested in looking like they were doing something rather than actually doing something to take 78% of the land. Palestinians were then either forced out of Palestine completely, becoming refugees, but also desiring the returns back to their own homes and lands in Palestine or forced into other areas of Palestine like Gaza and the West Bank, displaced from their own lands that they had lived in for centuries, if not longer. Is that fair? Is that just? Would we accept someone coming into our house, kicking us out and forcing us to live in a tent in the small part of the back garden? No, of course not. So when various world leaders talk about two-state solution, it's like being told we will now recognize that those home invaders who took your home and most of your garden can keep it. They have a right to it while you can live in the broken down shed in the back garden. It's a joke, isn't it? So why should the Palestinians accept that and accept this as an offer? At one time, they lived and owned the vast majority of the land, only to be forced to accept the mass expulsion and slaughter that took place in 1948 and the apartheid conditions they have endured for decades, and then be told just to accept this small parcel of land, and this is called a just agreement. Of course it isn't. And don't be confused by the pro-Zionist shills who claim that Palestine never existed. Palestine, this area as a geographical location, existed and Palestinian people had lived on that land going back to the Canaanites. Genetic studies prove this point. It's not about the existence of modern nation state called Palestine. That's a red herring. The point is that people lived on that land. Whatever you want to call the people or whatever you want to call the land, they lived there continuously for centuries if not millennia. They lawfully owned homes and farmlands and were then ethnically cleansed from their homes and lands. They believe that it's their right to return to their homes that they had lived in for centuries, if not millennia. The whole two-state solution suggests that the Zionists simply keep the 78% of the land. That's no longer up for negotiation. That 78% is a done deal. Why? Because the big political powers, mainly Western former colonial powers, say so. What's up for negotiation is creating a Palestinian state in the remaining 22% of the West Bank and Gaza. But even this 22% is shrinking. Some 700,000 Jewish colonial settlers occupy the West Bank, with more settlements being created. It's just a naked land grab, while the Zionists negotiate over a future potential Palestinian state. They're taking ever more of the West Bank. And this is a West Bank where there are roads prohibited for Palestinians to drive on, like the Shohada Street in Al-Khalil. There are huge walls separate 
separate Palestinian communities to protect Zionist colonial settlements. Palestinians and foreign activists have gathered to mark the 23rd anniversary of the closure of Shahada Street in the West Bank city of Hebron. A two-state solution where Zionists continue to still occupy the 22% for the Palestinians with walls that separate Palestinian communities, roads that they're not allowed to use on is simply unworkable. And remember, this is the 22% which is down from the 46% initially considered by the United Nations. How can a two-state solution be viable if the West Bank contains 700,000 Zionist colonial settlers? The second problem is Jerusalem. Palestinians supposedly only have the right to East Jerusalem, not the entire city, whereas West Jerusalem is allocated to the Zionists. Yet the Zionists want Jerusalem, the whole of it, to be their undivided eternal capital. And we've seen America move its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, implicitly recognizing Israel's claim to Jerusalem as their undivided capital. And many also want Al-Aqsa to be the site of their third Jewish temple as well. So that means the destruction of Al-Aqsa as well. The third problem is that Gaza and the West Bank are separated by Israel. How can you have a state that is viable if you can't have a government over a continuous territory? It's simply impractical and unworkable. Fourth, any future Palestinian state would have its economy, including water, gas, electricity, controlled by the Zionists. To have true sovereignty, you need to have control of your strategic resources. 97% of Gaza's water was unfit for human consumption. In contrast, Israelis have access to an average of 300 litres of clean water per day. This stark imbalance has its roots in how Israel took control of the region's water. Israel would control water exerting indirect control over Palestinian lives. And it's not just control of the economy and resources, Israel would also continue to control the borders of any future Palestinian state, including the waterways, seaports and even its airspace. And that's not to mention whether the Palestinians would be allowed to develop their own military. Then we have the question, about Palestinian refugees who were forced out either in 1948 or 1967, forced out completely out of Palestine. Do they get to return to their original homes? There are over 5 million Palestinian refugees living outside of Palestine in places like Jordan or Egypt or Syria or Lebanon. Do they get a right to return to their land from the 1948 or from the 1967 expulsions that they'd faced? See, this is not about a messy compromise that two sides have to make. Only one side is expected to compromise, and that side is the Palestinians. They have to accept Israel taking the vast majority of the land, controlling the borders, and never getting true independence, and never allowing those people who are ethnically cleansed from their homes the right to return back to their lands. And even if we take a secular standard for a moment, and I'm only showing this to show the utter hypocrisy of the West pushing a two-state solution, why are Western leaders constantly reiterating that the two-state solution is the only solution for the problem of Palestine? Why don't they reiterate a one-state solution where everyone in the land has the right to vote under a secular system? Why accept Israel as a specific ethno-racial supremacist state? Israel makes it clear it's a Jewish state. In 2018, the Israeli parliament passed the national state law stating Listen to this, that the right to exercise national self-determination in Israel is, to quote, unique to the Jewish people. It's a racist supremacist state, like apartheid South Africa, giving preferential treatment by virtue of race. As Ariel Sharon, former prime minister, said, our forefathers did not come here in order to build a democracy, but to build a Jewish state. So they're not interested in a one-state solution where everybody's free and has a right to vote. No, they want to create a specific ethno-racial state, a Jewish state. But it can't be a Jewish entity if Jews are the minority. If the 5 million Palestinian refugees have the right to return outside of Palestine, and that's added to the Palestinians that live within Israel or the West Bank and Gaza, then Jews would return to being around 30% of the population, the same percentage they were, after World War II. The demographics therefore do not support a Jewish ethno-racial state. The Palestinians are not small in number. Israel is a pariah on the world stage currently. So why should Palestinians, being the majority of the inhabitants on the land, accept the injustice of being given a small part of the 22% of the West Bank and Gaza? Why should they accept such an injustice? If you have the UN involvement, then 
Forget about refugee camps. Why should they be refugees after 70 years of, of you know, having independent life? They could have but, built their own life, but, but they didn't. But the reality is this, the Zionist colonial entity only exists as long as the West supports it. They don't have the demographics. They don't have the population. They don't have the demographics. And they don't even have the geography within the region to support the existence of this Zionist entity. And they only exist so long as the West supports it and so long as Arab rulers remain as dumb shaitan, remaining inactive. The two-state solution is not just unworkable, it's unjust. The Palestinians deserve better. They deserve their land, their homes and their rights back not continued subjugation, which is what a two-state solution would only offer them.